Hi again, uh, Josh Carr back here to model out Aurora Capital. Uh, this is a kind of tricky case. There's a lot going on here. Uh, you've got to value the real estate. Uh, there's debt component. There's some equity structuring. Uh, you're not just selling at one time, you're selling at a different time. So there's a lot of good stuff going on here. Uh, and again, this is from Cars Challenge Cases. And as I always like to remind people, if you're interested in this sort of stuff, you can always just check out my website at carrealestate.com. Or if you have other cases that you think are interesting, you can always email me at josh at carrealestate.com. So just some basic info there in case you feel like reaching out. Uh, that said, let's start building this thing. So according to this case, it says here, <clears throat> make this a little bigger so everyone can see it. Uh, we're going to buy some real estate. It's a couple hundred branches, uh, 2.5 million square feet. Okay, fine. Uh, we have uh, some sort of credit rating here, um, blah, blah, blah. We need to value the real estate. We've got debt. We've got equity. Okay, so you're basically working in sequence. You're doing the unlevered piece, the levered piece, the equity piece. I think there are a couple complexities here. Um, the first thing that's a little bit challenging is you're not just valuing the real estate and selling it. It says here that they're selling it over time, say some of it in year two, some of it in four additional transactions. One thing that makes it more annoying is they say assume mid-year sales. So if you're selling in the middle of the year, you can't just do years one, two, three, four, five. You've got to do months and this way you could sell it not at the end of the year, but in the middle of the year. That's one thing they put in there just to be a little bit annoying. Also, um, we're gonna have to build towards building some sort of sensitivity table, uh, which is fine. They wanna be able to vary the going in cap and the going out cap. Uh, so basically the purchase price is gonna be driven by a going in cap rate and the sale price by going out cap. Okay, so let's start getting the basic info in there so we can build at least a simple unlevered cash flow statement. Okay, so first off, it says that the rent is going to be $17.50 per year. I'll turn that into a monthly because something tells me we're going to need that. Uh, we're going to have rent growth, which is going to be 2.5% per year. It says here the expense reimbursements are going to be base stop. So it's going to be um, a reimbursement of expenses over the 10 bucks a foot, uh, assuming that that's growing at inflation. So OPEX is going to be 10 bucks, again, divided by 12. And expense growth is going to be 3%. Again, I know my formatting is ugly as heck, but you know, what do we care? And then finally, we're going to run this for 20 years and there's CapExes on the tenant. Now, the reality is because it we're saying we're selling it within six years, I'm gonna run seven years of cash flow. I don't need to do all 20 because we at worst case would be capping year seven's income to get year six's sale price, right? So we only need to run seven years. Um, also, one thing that's a little annoying is it doesn't give us a cap rate, but it does say that the tenant issues notes at 7.25 yield. So for my cap rate, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in something like the bond yield, which would be 7.25%, and there needs to be some sort of risk premium, uh, we'll call it an illiquidity premium, because, you know, when you sell real estate, it's not as, um, you know, it's not as flexible as selling a bond. I mean, real estate's more of a saga. So I'll add, I don't know, half a percent to that. And obviously this is a debate that one could have about whether or not it should be 0.5%, 1%, 0%. I don't know. Just, you could debate that. So I'll use a cap rate of 7.75 and that'll be on exit. And the going in cap rate, um, we haven't played with that yet. That, that's going to be what we'll need it for our purchase price. Okay, so 
let's start building this stuff out. We're going to have rent. We're going to have expenses, right? We're going to have NOI, aka net operating income. Okay, simple enough. And we're going to run this for months. In this case, if we're doing 84 months, you know, that's fine, right? 84 months. Yay. Okay, it's going to be 2.5 per year uh, and 3% per year. Um, that's fine. Now, there are a lot of different ways we could do this, but I, I'm going to be a little sloppy about it. Also, it says here that we have 2.5 million, million square feet. I should have put that in, that the square footage and the branches, we have here 200 branches and 2.5 million square feet. Okay, so to start with, the rent then would be that times this. That's our starting rent, right? Our starting expenses would be this times this, which means our starting NOI would be this minus this. Now, of course, we did not put in any recoveries. I need to put in some recoveries. So I'll put in a recovery line and I'll put in something that I'll just call rental revenue, which will be this plus this. So actually NOI should be this minus that. Okay, so that's our basic setup for rent. Uh, let's get some growth going, okay? So if you think about it, the first 12 months are going to be the same thing, right? It's going to be this, it's going to be this, it's going to be this, right? And NOI is always going to be that. So that's going to go until at least month 12. Then at month 12, then at month 12, there's going to be 2.5% for the rent and 3% for the expenses. Okay, so it's going to be that times 1 plus the rate of growth. Okay. And actually, I just realized I should have just made this. There we go. All right, because that's going to be this plus that. It's going to be line one plus one, line one, two. Expenses, it's the same basic idea, times one plus the rate of growth. NOI is still going to be A minus B. Now, when you think about it, lines 13 to 14 are going to be a replica of that. And then I'm going to take 13 to 24 and drag it over. In other words, Line 14, or column 14, month 14 is going to be the same to 24. But then once I get there, once I get there, I'm going to take it and bring it all over. Here, let me make this bigger so you can see what I mean. In other words, in other words, sorry. What I'm trying to do, sorry, I'm just messing around with it. If you think about it, month 13 is taking the prior year and growing it at either two and a half or three. This is going to take that and bring that all the way across. So the first month is going to be grow by something and 14 to 24, the next 11 will be just an extension of that. So I'm going to take that and bring that all the way across to say month 84. So what we should see after I play with the formatting is there's an adjustment in month 13. There's an adjustment in month 25. There's an adjustment in month 37. You get the idea. And it goes all the way out to month 84. And again, I need <clears throat> 84 because if I'm going to cap year six as NOI, 
if I'm going to sell it at the end of year six, I need year seven's NOI to get me somewhere, right? So that's going to be seven years of stuff. Cool. Now, the expense reimbursement is going to be base stop. In other words, it's going to be figure out what the expenses are in the in year two and then back out year one. Now, there are a lot of ways to do this. Um, I think the simplest way to do this is just to say that the recovery starting in, say, month 13 is always just going to be whatever's that minus whatever that was. In other words, sorry, in other words, take the expenses in year two, subtract from that what the expenses were at the beginning of year one, and I'll fix that item. And so that's going to be the increase in month 13. And then in month month 25, it'll go up. And every 12 months, we should see it jumping, right? And that's the whole idea of base stop. It's saying, <coughs> take the base and grow it. And I'm going to bring that all the way across. And so what we should see when all is said and done, maybe maybe I have to you know, put a line under this just to make it pretty. Again, you don't have to put lines under things, but I like putting lines under things. What we should see is, here's the rental revenue. Here's the expenses. Here's the NOI. And we should see, as we have here, that there's the recovery. And then that recovery is always just year two minus year one or year three minus year one or you get the idea. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's really not harder than that. I mean, it's just saying basically take what the expenses are and then subtract from that. That gets us our basic NOI. Now, where it's going to get annoying is we're going to have to sell it at different times. And I'm going to set that up a little bit. So they're going to be... Uh, liquidate the whole sale and it's going to start in year two and then there's going to be four transactions now it doesn't tell us exactly when that will be but i'm just going to make the assumption that we're going to have some sell dates right so we're going to have sale dates and we're going to have four events And if it's going to start in year two and it's going to happen mid-year on each, maybe it's month 30, <coughs> month 42, month 54, month 66, right? I mean, because it says here it's going to be four events and it's going to be within six years. And each time we do that, we're going to sell, say, I don't know, branches sold. We're going to sell 50 and 100 and 150 and 200 or, yeah, that's pretty much, that's like the total sold. Um, and so a couple of things are going to happen. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to say, what's the NOI look like of the next year? Like what, what kind of income are we getting off each branch basically? Um, and then from that, uh, multiply it out, uh, basically based on the number of branches remaining, whether or not it's 50 or 100 branches or 150 or whatever it's left. We let me back up. We're basically going to have to do two things. We're going to have to first off project what we're going to get from each sale, and then in addition to that, we're going to have to say, um, and how much money are we making by selling? this remaining cash flow. So it's like a two-part problem. It's like you got to figure out what kind of cash flow stream are we selling on a per branch basis um, and then how much are we getting from selling each 50 branches. Uh, so it's going to get a little bit annoying. But for now at least we have what the entire cash flow looks like. We can then take that entire cash flow and we could say okay for the first few years all the revenue is there for the next number of years less of the revenue is there, et cetera. So 
that at least gets us to a good starting place. Um, I'm going to visit this in video two where I actually kind of do what I've tried to explain in mangled words. Nonetheless, if you find this sort of stuff interesting, check out my website at carrealestate.com or email me at josh at carrealestate.com. And uh, as I always like to say to people, if you have other cases, send them to me. And until I speak to you again, keep building better models. Thank you.